Okay, I've got those rocks just about finished up, getting pretty close, and uh, kind of working my way into those tree trunks right around the rocks, doing some cleaning up, and uh, you know the paint was still pretty wet at this stage, so whenever I was working on those rocks in the background, it was kind of cutting back into the trunks, and so I'd have to come in and clean up those edges of the trunks. But uh, as I'm working on adding some of that glow to the tree trunks themselves, you can see there on the palette, um, I've, I've mixed some pretty strong kind of red-orange color there, as well as that brighter yellow, which I was using kind of around the rocks. But, but that, that red-orange glow color, it's got to be just a little lighter than the overall color of the trunk but then obviously a lot more saturated. And what I'm doing here is just using one of those soft badger hair brushes to apply that warmer color right on top and sort of get that glow effect to happen. I ended up really playing around with it quite a bit through there on that particular main tree with the little stumpy branch coming out and then also the tree to its left, and even the one one more tree over to the left, those, those kind of middle three trees, those main ones that are closest together, I thought those are great, great trees. You know, the placement of them is great in the, in the image so that they can all kind of frame that center of interest. And so I, I played around with that, that glow on all three of those a little bit. Just thinking, you know, anywhere where that bright water reflection is touching one of those tree trunks, like behind one of the tree trunks, was a place that I felt like I could make glow. And so I did that on all three of those trees here and there and ended up sort of playing it back and forth and kind of adding it and then taking it out and <laughs> sort of deciding, you know, I didn't want to go overboard with that glow. I didn't want to just make everything glow. So I really was trying to be mindful of where's the most advantageous place to have that glow. And so I end up, if you can see the final painting, I ended up kind of resting on that tree to the right with the little stumpy branch being the one that would have the most glow since it was closest to the, uh, the brightness, the brightest part of the water. That was the tree that's closest to that. So I thought, well, if it's glowing the most, then it's a bit more singled out, a bit more obvious where I'm trying to get the attention to go. And so anyway, it was interesting to, to play it back and forth a little with that glow and really push it in all three of the trees and then sort of take it back out again and decide where does it need to actually be. But uh, the point I wanted to make as well at this point is... Uh, when you're doing a glow like that, or anytime you're adding, you know, adding paint to an otherwise already established area, uh, and you're trying to control the value, don't forget to use your palette mixtures to compare. Remembering all the way back to when I was talking about in the earlier lessons about, you know, mixing your colors right next to each other, that adjacent color mixing. It's such a, a help to give you a preview of where your value is at, right? Uh, if, you, if you've got the value already established on your palette, then changing the color by mixing right next to that established mixture, you can see right there a preview, right, of how those two values compare and you're, you're less likely to accidentally be changing your value um, as you're adding color. So make sure to, to utilize those areas uh, of your palette and that adjacent color mixing so that you really can uh, give yourself a preview and save yourself the hassle of, <laughs> of accidentally changing values. Uh, the other thing I did want to point out too was how critical it was in this particular design to keep those three trees from becoming equally spaced. And I remember right when I was on the spot taking those photos, I was thinking about that. Like, I got to have these trees be, um, you know, 
not equally spaced. I've got to position myself so that they're not lined up <laughs> with equal space in between. And they're interesting trees just with the shapes of them. So that helped too. But I was really trying to be careful as I even was composing the photo uh, to think about that tree placement. Um, so, you know, we're again, we're trying to be careful that we don't end up with some of those uh, those designs to avoid, like we talked about earlier on in the design lesson, uh, talking about, you know, things equally spaced, uh, repetitive forms as well. You know, that was definitely the case on this painting too, with all those branches. I was really trying to also be aware of not overdoing it with the branches because they really don't all need to be there. Obviously they're there in the photo and they work, but in the painting, we, I could put them all in and I could really try to painstakingly make sure I get them all exactly the way they are in the photo. But for the idea of the painting, they're just not really necessary to get them all. So it, it goes back to that same idea that I keep talking about, which is taking the most dominant detail and really letting that, you know, shine first and then deciding, well, what else do I need? Do I really need some more branches or are these enough? Are any of them distracting? That was another issue here too. I, I had a few places where some of those little, um, you know, stumps of branches, the little broken off ones were almost lining up or, or creating a tangent with, with another shape, you know, like that the, the landmass, the top of that mountain form in the background was kind of almost running into a place where one of the branches was coming out of the tree. Um, that closest tree to us, there's a little, a little branch like that sticking out pretty close to where the top of that mountain form is. And I was really trying to be careful that I didn't accidentally end up with, you know, a tangent with those forms kind of coming to a V. Uh, together. Also, right above that brightest part of the water, that area with kind of a bunch of busy branches there, I was also very close with that lower branch just above the brightest part of the water. It was getting close to lining up with the top of the water, and I was really trying to make sure I allowed enough separation there that they didn't end up looking like they were coming together, right? Um, so this one was a bit tricky in that way with all these little branches to watch out for and keep from lining up with each other in weird ways or creating tangents in other areas. Uh, so that was an interesting, an interesting one, even as I was going through the painting, not even from the very first part of the drawing, although I was trying to think about that in the drawing phase too. But as I kind of added more branches as I went. I was really trying to keep that in mind so that I didn't end up with confusing branch uh, areas or too much distraction from branches. Uh, again, trying to make sure that the eye is going to go where I want it to go and not get distracted by all these little detailed branches. So Anyway, um, lots to think about there, and uh, we'll finish out this segment. And uh, in the next one, there's still a few other spots I needed to refine and finish that really have continued to just be um, at the blocking stage so far. Those, those bushes on the left side still haven't really been touched again. So I'll get in there and do some of that uh, finishing in those places and uh, talk more at that point.